And in today's video of Tutorial Tuesday, we're going to take a look at how you can create Edge Red Ring by simply using the AI curvature node that exists in Arnold for Maya. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how you can add Edge Red Ring or, you know, trying to recreate the idea of dust and sand being on your model without actually texturing them by hand. So we're going to go through a couple of things. First of all, I'll show you how you can get this going and how you can also use the curvature node or curvature map, depending on the app which you're coming from, you know, to start this texturing and how you can proceed with it. Then we'll get into a much more simpler way of how you can run around this and also get some results using different maps and attaching them to different nodes directly here in Maya. And we're going to start off by talking about how the curvature node is created what and what you need to know about this and from there we're going to proceed so directly here I have the Bastin character here and this character is made by one of our students and what we're going to do is just simply throw in the AI dom light go ahead and fire this thing up let's take a look at this so with this ready to go what we want to do now is to simply open up hypershade so I'm just going to pause this for a while and go ahead and fire up hypershade so we hypershade there next thing which we want to do is to create a brand new AI standard surface so so the AI standard surface is the Swiss Army knife for working with Arnold and of course you can simply you know attach this and with this assigned directly in our scene the next thing which we want to do is to simply grab onto so I'm just going to move this out apart so simply grab the curvature node all right so the curvature node by default so if we go ahead and just simply play this back the curvature node by default can be used to drive various things now the cool thing with the curvature node is it has three vectors and you can either use either of those vectors to work with anything at all that you want or you can simply work with one now the curvature node is not only native to an old curvature node is also available for redshift and other rendering engines and at the same time if you want to bake the curvature node you can also use tools like you know substance and also marry and so on and so forth to bake these things from a higher resolution to low resolution the curvature node by default is used to create edge red ring and if you want to get this going what we can do is we can select on this object right now i'm also going to push this all the way up and i can simply use this all right i can simply use the red channel and drive the base so i can use this to drive the base and once i do that and go ahead and press the you know the playback button you would start noticing that we're having some sort of looks around this so i'm just going to go all the way back and you can start noticing this so i'm just going to simply select this right now and go all the way down and let's pause this all right so i'm just going to simply select this right now and i can use this to actually increase or reduce how much of the radius i want so for us to get this going what we can do now is i can go ahead and just simply select a certain part so for example let's select the head and just get this ipr working there and you can start noticing all of those details that we want there you can also choose to turn this off select this object as it is for example and we can go all the way to the texture or you can go all the way to what we have here and i can simply change this all right i can simply select this and give it a different color so let's say i give it a color of uh, blue for example or probably i can give it a much more darker color because what we have right now is not the default color so i can go ahead and give it a much more darker color or probably just simply run a simple gold color on top of this Probably we can get that gold right there. So if I run a simple gold color like this, I can still use this as it is to drive the metalness. At the same time, you can still use this to drive various things. So for example, with what we have here, I can go all the way down and actually within the part where we have our emission, we can simply throw in our emission color of red. We don't see anything happening, but then if we pick up the red, or actually I think we should go with, you know, something different. So I can go with um, a color like this, all right? So if I go through and pick up the red and drive the emission by it, you start noticing these things here. So for for any reason at all you can come over here and you can change the radius if you want and at the same time you can also choose to multiply this so that you can get way more things going i, I still think that maybe we can get 
you know can get good with a different color so i can go all the way up here and simply change this to a darker shade so that we can get all these things looking cool right so we can get that going from there and with this you can start experimenting with a whole lot of things why the concave is targeted towards you know those crevices that you have in your model so for the next example which we're going to do we're going to look at the very simple model which we're going to use to get things going owing to the fact that we're recording this right now there's a whole lot of things happening in the background and the rendering is definitely going to be slow so let's move over to using something else that is quite small and then we're going to get up to speed and continue the tutorial so i'm going to just simply go through and create a very simple platonic object here and i would also scale this all the way up and move this up all right create an ai standard surface duplicate the ai standard surface create a mixed shader and create a curvature map so with this done, what I need to do is just simply rewire this all the way up to that point, connect the first one to the first one, connect the second one, and then simply use the red channel to drive the mix. And with that done, next thing which I want to do is just simply get rid of that. And I'll simply get this and apply it over to this object. Let's throw in a simple dome light and fire up our IPR render. So by simply doing this, you now notice that we have this directly in our scene. So I'm also going to go ahead and select the first one, which is this right here, and I'm going to change the color. So I might go through and give it a color of black. And with that done, I'm also going to increase this and select this other one and give it a color of red. All right. So probably a red like this would be cool. So I can do that and you start noticing we have something this cool happening. Another thing which I think we need to get directly in our scene here is a plane so i do like my planes directly there so i'm just going to go through and simply add one and scale this all the way so we can have a base and have something we're looking at take out this grid and press f on our viewport so that we can see these things in its glory so with this done what next thing which we want to do is open up our hyper shade and with our hyper shade open and ready to go you would notice that our mix is now being driven by this which is the curvature map right and you can actually revert that by using the reverse node and by simply throwing in that reverse node directly in there you can choose to revert this and you're going to get something totally different so in case you want to revert this you can you know play with the reverse node to get that so you can also now go in here so i'm just going to be pausing this from time to time i guess it's actually best to select the certain small part that would just be you know rendering all the time all right cool so we can have this and we can come over here and start increasing that radius so you can start seeing how much of that radius is increasing and we can also go ahead and use the threshold to control how much of the threshold that we're getting so we can do that and we can also turn down on how much we want this to spread or how much we don't want it to spread and in most cases you would like to simply increase this i'm just going to increase our samples all the way to eight so that's going to sample that a whole lot and you can choose to multiply this depending on what you want so if you want to make it more like an infectious stuff you can also do that so you see the more we multiply this stuff we can get those infectious looking thing going there and we can choose to use a map to drive this so using a map to drive this is always incredible so we can choose to use a noise map and with this noise map right here we can drive these things and get something very good going so i'm going to simply pick the alpha coming from here and i can throw this alpha into the radius now if i throw the alpha into the radius it sort of changes the way the radius happens because the radius now is getting the feedback or is getting what is working with directly from the alpha so if i come over to this alpha and i start changing the radius all right you can still notice that we're having something quite different and of course you can see that change it from here and we can also play with the threshold and you're also going to notice that effect there so in case you've not seen the video where we talked about you know introduction to hypershade or you know talk about how these black and white images work probably you should go you know try as much as possible to see that video and you might get a good understanding of how these things work so if we want to now put that edge rendering into work we can simply do this by coming over here and i can simply change this which we have here that is the red one right now and change it all the way to clay and replace that as clay so i can go ahead and change that to clay and i can select the second one which we have here so let's actually rename this and name this to clay and i can select this other one and we can give it a different uh material so we're going to simply use the preset right now 
and I can use not the copper, probably diamond. Let's try glass. So I think glass would be cool. So we can use that or probably we should use something else. So we can actually go in there and play with gold. Gold doesn't look bad. All right. So we can use gold to actually get this going. Right now, I think it's also worth it to sort of reduce you know the, the the multiply so i'm going to reduce the multiply from here and you can start noticing these things happening at the same time you can play with the output so you can use the outputs and change them you know play with them get some very interesting results you can go over and use either the convex or the concave and for the concave you don't see that happening here because you know we don't have hidden parts so what i'm going to do just for us to get that happening is i would come down here and simply minimize this and i'm going to select this object press ctrl e so that you can start doing that wonderful extrusion that you like and i'm also going to come over here and change this to off so with that done i'm also going to hold down control so i can control how much of these things i'm having and the next thing which i'm going to do is press g one more time on my keyboard because we want to repeat the same thing again and by this time i'm going to simply use this to play with the thickness all right so with this thickness going on I mean, this is definitely going to work, but then I would like to bevel this a little bit or probably we should just let this thing be. All right. I'm going to let this be and fire up our hyper shade. And at the same time, I'm also going to get this here. So with this here right now, once I play back this, you now start noticing that we're having a different result altogether. All right. So I can now select this, which is our curvature and see what happens when I change this to concave. So once I change this to concave, you see it now starts targeting those other interior edges. Meanwhile, the convex actually targets the exterior edges. So depending on your object density, you can simply get some very interesting looking result. I also choose to tone down the spread. I think it's a little bit too much. So I'm just going to tone this down a little bit like that. All right, that doesn't look bad at all. So we can have something like this. And if we switch this right now to concave, you can start noticing that we have this going or firing directly in there. So you can use this to get some very nice edge rendering happening on your model. You can get your high poly model, get them directly in here, make a couple of changes to them, you know, play with these things, tweak them, get some balances here and there. And for anything in the world, if you want to also go ahead and multiply these things, of course, you can also choose to multiply them and also get some very, you know, cool results. So like right now, you, we can go ahead and multiply this by simply throwing this multiply here. And we can use this and use all of the parameters that comes through from here. And you can see we have a much more dense one right now. And we can use this, select any of this and multiply this. So we can use this to play with the threshold, bias or even the multiply. So with that, you can now notice that we're having some extra interesting things going on within this stuff. So one thing to note is that your curvature map exists here in Maya. And at the same time, you can choose to bake your curvature map in different applications altogether. All right. So you can choose to bake them in either Substance Painter, Mari and so on. But then if you just want to get your rendering directly here in Maya, you don't want to go out there to start doing all those edge rendering, all the stuff. You can get these things done right here in Maya by simply using the curvature map that exists for Arnold. And at the same time, if you want to get like some very quick renders, of course, you can use the Arnold rendering that actually supports GPU right now. And this is definitely going to save you a lot of time. And that's definitely going to be about it. I would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section. If you like this video or you learned something from it, then of course, you should go ahead and hit the like button. And also don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing if you can hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.